Hi, welcome to this new episode of the BH8 series. My name is Maria, and I'm the Chief Communication Officer of Barcelona Health Hub. The BH8 series are monthline online events that we have been organizing from Barcelona Health Hub since March last year. They are about topics related to digital health, and we organize these webinars for and with our members and other experts from around the world. This new episode of today is organized in collaboration with our member Telemedi, and we will talk about how to implement hybrid healthcare to make medicine easier and more usable for older citizens. Today, you discover everything you would like to know about Telemedi's approach to bring back the most important aspect of a medical service, the humane factor. Healthcare has changed considerably in the recent years. There are different approaches, channels, and technologies involved in medical practice. However, the main principle must remain the same, giving patients the medical health solution they really need, especially to the elderly. The most important social problem is to relieve the public health service and guarantee as many inpatient visits as possible for those cases that require them. Welly by Nationale Nederlanden, Judeo and Telemedi stand firmly behind the hybrid health model, which means creating opportunities to choose your treatment route physical visits or online consultation. They join their forces to enhance the accessibility of elderly to the highest level of healthcare. Today in this webinar, they will share their approach on how to implement a hybrid model to break down barriers in modern healthcare and make it accessible and affordable for all elderly people. Now, without further ado, I would like to welcome the panelists of today. It's Rafael Rodriguez Gonzalez. He is a business development director at Telemedi. Albert Vidal, proposition lead at Nationale Nederlanden. Michiel Das, CMO and head of growth at QDL. And last but definitely not least, Manuel Vasquez, doctor and psychiatrist at the Germans Trias y Pujol Hospital. Please, guys, introduce yourself shortly. And um, Rafael, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the, for the nice introduction, Maya. Well, I'm very glad to be here. And well, regarding myself, as you mentioned, I work for, for Telemedia and Global Business Development for Spanish market. And um, well, I, I would like to just a little bit of background of what we do on Telemedia. Uh, Telemedia is a global health company. Uh, we have been in the market uh, offering our solutions uh, since 2014. Uh, we, are, we have our own dedicated uh, telemedicine platform. Uh, on a mainly basis, I will say that we manage uh, circa 100,000 consultations and we have activities across Europe and Latin um, partnering with more than 100 B2B clients. Uh, to be more specific regarding our solutions, uh, we have our own white label platform and we offer the possibility to connect with uh, GP specialties uh, by chat, video or telephone. Uh, in terms of languages, uh, we have like more than 10, 12 languages available, and we can issue local prescription, referrals, electronic prescription. So, well, as a summary, I will say that we are the trusted partner for digital, and we give to our clients a unique plug and play uh, across platform, sorry, a plug and play platform across several markets. So I will, Albert, I think now it's your, the floor is yours. Hi, <clears throat> thanks. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here today with, uh, with all of you. Hi to everyone. So I'm, I'm Albert Vidal. I work in National Netherlands and Spain. And I'm the responsible of Welly, which is a new innovation initiative that has been recently launched. Well, our, our first pilot has been recently launched this summer in, this, in the Spanish market. Uh, this project has been ideated during the, the pandemic in collaboration with Telemedia and Cuideo, which are our, our partners in Welly. And the, the, value, the value proposition um, uh, aims to help uh, Spanish families, uh, elderly people, and also their, their families to what we call to close the loop of, of caregiving. No? Uh, so the idea is to help them towards um, having a carefree retirement and enable a customer journey uh, with uh, different services provided by trusted partners to have access uh, to the top quality uh, healthcare uh, services and also home care services. That is the one that is currently available in the market, but the idea in the future is to integrate uh, more services around this, uh, this journey. Okay, next one, Michiel, could you please introduce yourself? 
Yes, of course. Um, well, from, from my side as well, um, pleasure being here and sharing this uh, virtual stage with, with all of you. So I'm um, Gildas, I'm the CMO of, of Cuideo. Cuideo basically is, is the leading platform in Spain um, that allows families um, to, to hire and to manage home care solutions. So, so what we're basically doing is we're helping families find the right caregiver for their specific uh, situation. So we have a database of more than uh, tens of thousands of caregivers in the entire region of Spain uh, who have undergone a demanding selection process. And this allows us then to, to find the ideal caregiver for any family uh, in the entire region of, of, of Spain and to help them stay at home um, longer and, 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 and therefore also improve the quality uh, of life of, of those, uh, yeah, the, the, the elderly in general. Um, so in terms of like the recent um, evolutions in, in Cuideos, in October 2020, we launched our product to the French market. In October 21, we were selected as one of the 15 startups to participate in Google for Startup uh, Accelerator Europe. And in November 2021, and we were also listed as one of the 15 most promising um, startups in the insure tech industry by the Spanish newspaper El Referente. So, yeah, very, very uh, happy to, 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 to be here with you all today. We're also very happy to have you with us. Uh, Manuel, uh, can you please introduce yourself as well? Yeah, I, uh, Manuel, I'm a psychiatrist. Uh, I previously worked in Madrid. Right now I'm working in uh, Barcelona and... Uh, hospital German Trias. Uh, right now I'm working in the emergency department, but previously I've worked in the uh, residential unit with uh, more chronic patients and elder patients, and also uh, in an uh, acute unit with uh, patients that are uh, having their, in many times, their first contact with uh, psychiatry. Uh, the um, the caring of the different kind of patients and uh, also involving the part of general medicine into practice has always been an important part of of even psychiatry for me. Uh, although it's not of quite often that uh, taken into account in many patients, but with uh, patients with a more general profile and have more uh, co-occurring other conditions, uh, I think it's actually quite important. Great. Thank you so much for your introduction. Well, let's start to, uh, with, uh, with uh, the more pressing uh, matters from today, because today we are going to discuss how to solve the real problem of limited access to healthcare for older citizens, especially for those living outside the big cities in the rural areas. Albert, uh, could you please indicate in how you think in which way uh, key market players should provide access to healthcare? Um, yes, I think that during during the pandemic we observed something very interesting. No, there is the major adoption of um, telehealth. No, by the by the uh, all the all the population. No, uh, not only elderly, by all the population. No, because we were in a very extraordinary uh, circumstances, right? So we had uh, this big adoption of this technology. This is the typical curve that we see of the technology adoption. No, with um, with like the uh, hype of this technology, and now we are going, we are going back to normality, you know, and we see a different scenario. You no, know? we all know what is the benefits of telehealth for all. You no, know? uh, so you can access to a good uh, healthcare uh, service at, at your home. But now uh, there is a question. You no, know? so how this technology is going to maintain in the in the market? How this can benefit uh, not only. Uh, elderly but the old population and I think it's the time to think in which are these those use case or those situation where um, this technology can can um, uh, give solution to many of the of the access problems that the population has no in this sense and from Wally perspective we identified that uh, this can be a very good complement for instance for for people who has limited or uh, difficult access to uh, quality health, you know? and we were thinking, for instance, in uh, in elderly people in the rural areas of, of Spain, you know? that uh, maybe 
and they they have uh, very um, very far no, uh, hospitals uh, or a good uh, uh, doctors or some kind of specialties no and and especially for people maybe that is in our very long treatment no so there is a long um, long long trips to the to the rural areas no so in this case uh, we think that uh, platforms like like Welly and other uh, solutions can also complement the accessibility uh, uh, to, to a good, uh, good services uh, uh, to, these, to these people. No? But we only don't think about healthcare. I think that this is a model that can also help uh, to access uh, different services um, from, from, from rural communities. No? This is something that also I think that has happened in other industries and other sectors before. No, and it's it's all about improving the, the access no, to service and technology. I think that can play a major role there. Okay, thank you. Well, as you might know, uh, Telemedi's approach is to stay focused first on the patients and then comes the technology. Uh, we're now going to show you a great video where it will be explained a little bit more. Telemedicine has grown considerably in recent years. There are different approaches, channels, and technologies involved in this new way of consultation. However, the main principle must remain the same, giving patients the medical health solution they need. Most companies in the digital healthcare environment are using a technology-focused approach, where the main and most important aspect of their solution is the technology. In fact, the most important aspect of a medical service is the patient their needs, and the solution we can bring to their medical conditions, pathologies, mental health, and well-being. The patient focus approach in telemedicine and e-health aims to bring back the most important aspect of a medical service, the humane factor. This novel trend is being triggered by the same technological evolution that has brought telemedicine and e-health to our daily lives. However, its importance increases exponentially Hence, the patient must feel closer to their health service. The personalization in telemedicine and e-health is an approach where the one-size-fits-all claim is abolished. It is a combination of different aspects related to the patient's care. The new personalization process is a multifaceted approach in which there are at least six steps to take into account. Telemedicine is a challenge even when all resources are available. The main reason for this is the difficult assessment healthcare professionals need to perform through digital channels and to be able to tackle all patients' needs. A proper personalized healthcare is one where the doctor will give the patient the possibility to express concern and detention, empower patients to be part of the decision-making process, create a long-lasting relationship with the patient, and reach out to the patient's feelings and concerns. Patients will always have a reason for their consultations. This reason might not be obvious in some cases, but any healthcare professional should have the ability to find the real reason for the consultation and guide the patient towards a journey find a definitive solution for its necessities. The new patient journey is a process focused on four steps. Patient health condition disease, doctor's guidance and coaching, concerted decision making and final recommendations. Let's enhance the patient's journey throughout telemedicine and e-health by boosting together the new patient focus approach in the digital healthcare revolution. Okay, well, the hybrid health model, which means creating opportunities to choose your own treatment route, like physical visits or online consultation, seems to be more popular and obvious right now. Rafael, you from Telemedi, from your point of view, where would you think the greatest obstacles lie? Well, uh, I think there are there are a few points we need to tackle in order to make uh, accessible and to promote these hybrid health solutions. Essentially, uh, I will say that we need to tackle from the very beginning about quality. We need to make sure that we provide 
top service quality for our for our patients. Uh, as, as the video mentioned a few minutes ago, a few seconds, I will say, uh, patient-centric focus. It's very important that we keep patients in the centric of whatever we are doing in our business. For example, for telemedicine, uh, telemedic, we really, we, we really consider that we need to deliver solutions, patient-centric approach. That's the key. Right now we are talking about elderly, but the reality is like, uh, we all, well, I'm 42 years old, so in a few years, I'm gonna be one of the elderly using telemedicine and hybrid health solutions. So for me, it's gonna be very easy to, to have. I'm, I'm, I'm already used to those solutions, but in the future, I will continue being used. But today, currently, we are facing or we are approaching people that they really need to have seamless solutions and really easy solutions to be applicable for them. For example, there might be people over 70, 75, I always use my, my father example, he managed very well the tablet. It's incredible, believe me. It's, it's, uh, it's something to, to be very, it's, it's his recognition for him. But there are people that they are not very useful or they don't feel comfortable using this uh, telemedicine digital health solution. In that sense, you know, uh, I will say like, the approach. It's very important that we keep our approach very clear, that we deliver very easy to learn, easy to use solutions. Another, another important point, it's about quality, what I mentioned. And for example, we have identified uh, different, different parts when, when booking a teleconsultation. I will say the uh, customer journey in terms of uh, pain journey, okay? So we can identify issues uh, before doing a medical appointment using telemedicine, during the medical appointment and after the, med uh, the medical appointment. So in that sense, it's also very important that we are able to understand uh, the difficulties uh, patients are facing every day when using telemedicine. That's why we need, uh, we think we need to promote the best solutions, combining as, as you know, is the topic of this webinar, remote access to telemedicine solutions in our case, but also access to stationary visits, home care services. For example, uh, like with Leo, like uh, you know, our our doctor here, you know, it's the perfect complement in order to to make sure like uh, we create the, the a dedicated or a specific customer journey where we combine digital and stationary visits at the same time that we are able to deliver the best solutions for elderly uh, for also for young people, you know, to, 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 be, to be very honest, you know, combining both services at the same time is going to be the way to make sure that we fulfill uh, customer expectations. Okay, so I will say those, those two principles are key in order to, to make accessible telemedicine hybrid models elderly uh, people, as I said, which right now we are young, but in a few years, we're gonna be using all these, all these solutions. So we get used to face-to-face -face meetings, to digital health, whatever we can solve using remote solutions. We need to make, to be very sure that we, that we, that we create a new route for all these persons so they can get proper treatment, proper, uh, for example, like with our caregivers, you know, that they can provide proper, care at home, you know, like there are, yeah, there are so many examples. I think I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I will say a new, a new customer journey, the new customer journey where combining telemedicine solutions and home care services is the way in order to implement these hybrid models. Okay, great. Thank you so much, uh, Rafael, that's, uh, that's great. Um, in next to this, a lack of trust to caregivers uh, seems to be the biggest obstacle for families searching for help for their relatives. Uh, Michiel, maybe you could tell us how to convince them to choose them to have their elders with the best professionals. Yeah, very good question indeed. No? And, but before answering the question, let me also just quickly comment on what uh, Rafael was saying, no? because Guideo's model also perfectly fits this, this hybrid, hybrid model that Rafael was talking about and also Albert uh, before. Because, you know, once you have that technology in place, you also need to make sure that it's being well managed, but also that you're answering the needs no, of those people um, that, that require that assistance that uh, Rafael was talking about. And this is basically what we do at, at Cuideo. So very much in line with what my colleagues have already explained. Back in 2015, 
we already noticed that you know more and more people were, were growing older no? and this was only going to increase um and and therefore the need for for that specialized help will also continue to increase no? which is in fact um the the main problem or the main challenge that we have in this you know silver economy as we, as we as we call it no so just to give you a specific example the dependency rate so the number of people that require specialized help um is, is increasing every year by 17 percent right 17 percent every year so that's that's a lot of new people that require specialized help at home and um, just to give you another example by 2050 um according to um european studies more than 65 percent of spain's population for instance will be more than uh, 65 years old so there's a huge um need for those specialized uh, help services at home. Uh, and, and, and most of the times, basically, families, households have two options, right? So they can either send um, their loved ones to, to a nursing home, which has obviously advantages, but also poses some challenges uh, because it's it's costly. There was also a bit of you know, reputational damage, perhaps, with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, or you know they can they can rely on on public solutions so on government programs etc cetera, etc cetera. but with this increasing amount of, of people that are you know uh, requiring help every year um, that model is not sustainable in the long run so a lot of families are doubting at this point you no know, as, as to you know what should I do um, what what's the ideal uh, solution here so some of them are are going towards the gray markets which is you know finding a caregiver themselves but with without any contract so you know just trying to make sure that someone comes to their house to to help them um and th this this poses then a double problem so on one side you have the caregiver um who is not protected uh, because you know there's no official contract he's not a, he or she is not officially working um but for the family the problem is even worse because the family um you know what do we do in case of theft or accidents or you know in case of any of any problems right so the family is completely helpless with all the possible consequences so basically um you know Taking this into account, what we're doing at Cuideo is, is we're helping people. No? We're helping people um, by taking all these um, challenges of finding the ideal caregiver by taking them away, right? Because what we're doing is we're focusing on helping people find the ideal caregiver, but also making sure that everything is done officially, right? So that there's an official contract, so people don't need to go to the gray market, and also, you know, they don't need to take people out of their houses if those people don't require, um, you know, wanting to leave their houses. Obviously, you know, in, in certain situations, it's it's it obviously makes a lot of sense going to nursing houses, but sometimes, you know, people just want to stay uh, at home where they are at ease. So what we're doing is um, we're, we're basically helping people, right? And we're basically fixing the main problem uh, in, in, in our industry, which is making sure that you find the ideal qualified caregiver. And what we're doing is uh, once, once people call us, uh, we basically offer them two solutions. So one solution is, uh, you know, we take care of everything. So it's a caregiver service by the hour. So we take care of everything. We have caregivers that are part of our team. Um, so the family doesn't need to worry about anything. But there's another possibility as well. If a family needs uh, long-term care, right? So it's, if there's a specific need uh, during a very long time, what we're doing there is we're basically helping the family hire the best caregiver without them having to search in the gray market without, you know, any of the possible consequences that that we offered that we that we that I that I mentioned before. So in both situations, we're offering this risk-free solution to the to the families, um, allowing them to to you know to rapidly have a professional caregiver um, at at their houses, right? So in order to also make sure that we're uh, offering this to the entire region of Spain, to any any, any area in Spain, uh, since 2015, we've been investing heavily on an in-house technology platform. Uh, it's called Affinity. And what we're basically doing is we're automating every part of the customer journey, but also we're automating the selection process of caregivers. So we are able to absorb you know, all of these caregivers that come, that, 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 um, that inscribe ourselves in our platform. What we're then doing is we're using a lot of different um, 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 algorithms to basically find the ideal caregiver. And with this, um, with this platform in, in, into place, basically what we're able to do is in less than two days, we can basically find the ideal caregiver in any region of, of Spain um, following very strict procedures, right? So only 90%, 19% of all of the people that, that, that um, come to our platform are in the end admitted um, um, in, in our platform, right? So that's that's also helping a bit, you know, again, taking this risk-free solution and offering it to the families. And it, just finishing off with, with, you know, the importance of this hybrid model. So 
um, our, our customer journey is, is, um, is very agile in the sense that it's digitized. So we're in contact with families, but we can uh, react very rapidly to all their needs and all of their desires. Um, but obviously, you know, once the caregiver is also in place, we're also following up with, with families again um, through telephone, emails, but also direct messages to see how everything is going. So that's basically what we are doing from, from Cuideo to, to help um, get more people um, the opportunity to have a caregiver at home. Thank you, Michiel. But what I understand from your, from your story is it's also about security, like exactly. uh, not yeah. only for the caregivers, but also yeah. for the patients. Exactly for for both sides, no. So the family um, is 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 assured that you know there, there there's enough professional caregiver uh, with references that have been checked by us, um, and also from the caregiver's point of view, everything is official, right? And there's an official contract, so you know there's also this this trust relationship between the two, and we are there as well in case anything happens. So we're always following up with the family, or we're also connecting with with the caregiver to see that both sides are always. Um, you know, in a good relationship. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, talking about caregivers, I'm actually very curious about the opinion of uh, of Manuel, our doctor in the house of today. Uh, Manuel, uh, satisfaction of a patient is the most important aspect when it comes to a hybrid healthcare. Um, can you tell us how to build a solid foundation on which quality prevails to provide a service that builds trust in patients? Uh, well, I actually think uh, one of the most important parts about that is asking the patient when he wants, how can you actually help them? I think if you ask them, they will tell you. They don't always know and they will have doubts, mostly because they probably are not used to the doctor asking them, how can you do something to help? They probably are more used to having uh, their doctor tell them what to do. But I think we are going right now through a, through a great transition in medicine where uh, doctors are not just a person that you go to and they tell you, you have to do this because I say so, and are becoming more uh, someone you go to to ask questions. But this is difficult when you have like 10 minutes to visit a patient. Of obviously, you cannot in 10 minutes talk to them, ask what their expectations are about uh, healthcare and about and explain to them what their condition uh, involves and which would be the best way to treat it or to care for it. But I have like this uh, kind of utopic kind of dream where. I don't know, maybe you need to uh, start a diet. Well, uh, instead of just like going to the to your doctor's office and the doctor telling you, well, you should eat this and this and this. Uh, I would be, I think that it would be like ideal if you could do that in the supermarket. I mean, I'm talking to my doctor, I'm in the supermarket and I'm showing my doctor which are the things I'm like, thinking of buying and he's telling me like, no, you shouldn't get that, those cookies, get the other ones or put that kind of, uh, kind of whatever down, uh, pick the oranges or the carrots or things like that. Because I think that uh, for one, that in, engages the, the patient, the relationship between patient and practitioner a lot more so they, they feel a lot more confident and are more willing, and in the end, they will be more willing to actually do the things you tell them. Because that's actually another very difficult part, uh, changing your habits and changing the things you do on a daily basis is difficult. It's the most difficult thing. It's way easier for people to take a pill than uh, change their potatoes for carrots for example but if they like feel they trust the person that's telling them this kind of thing it's a lot more probable that they will do the those changes and that they will adhere to these new habits that you're trying to implement but that's not possible if i 
don't trust the person I'm speaking to. So that part is actually very important, not only in uh, in in healthcare and in in a way that you can ask the patient and make a good diagnosis, but also in uh, maintaining the the changes or the treatments you would like to to include and that you think that will benefit the patient. In the end, we uh, human beings uh, don't just do things because they are right. We actually do things because they feel right. And that's important in, in healthcare. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. Mm -hmm. So it's asking the patients what they need and uh, and make sure they trust the person who, who is helping them. That's basically uh, your point of view. Yeah. Right? Well, in that in that sense, I'm sorry. No, no. I was going to say that, that you know it's uh, you you mentioned two two very good points, uh, Manuel. You know about uh, you know advice. Uh, to, you need to feel you trust the other person. Also, our colleague from from Guido, he mentioned also about quality about trust as well so i think those are really great topics you know and this is more about uh, this is quite related to what we are discussing today here it's about trust it's about quality it's about uh, to deliver proper training to the persons involved on all these processes i will i could say like doctors caregivers uh, we as a company we need to keep that in our in our adn uh, uh, dna sorry i was translating very bad by the way dna in order to make sure that we that we have quality trust and we always keep the the patients in the centric of whatever we do because at the end of the day we are talking about uh, health in different ways. Telemedicine is health. Caregivers are they are taking care of someone at home. You know the families they are relying of what we are doing. Our people they are relying on our solutions, on our doctors, and our caregivers, and our innovation. Whatever we think or whatever we are trying to innovate, we need to make sure that we provide quality, top quality, top services, and that we create trust and that we make the people to feel comfortable using our solutions. I think that's a, a key element. And Manuel, he, he explained that, that very well from a from medical point of view, in my, in my opinion. Albert, how do you see that from your experience from National Nederlander? Um, well, I, I think that the, the, the idea Manuel was uh, was saying is very aligned in what we want to do with with Welly is to join forces with uh, with relevant players from the ecosystem in order to to launch a relevant uh, solutions to the to the people. No, and this is the this is the purpose of the of National Netherlands and the purpose is to to care to help people care what they they care care the most no and and by by welly and by launching welly we want to improve the accessibility to to quality services and also to to find um, use cases where um, all these solutions can came together no so we have here today cuideo and we have uh, telemedi uh, and this is a clear example no so we can find many join areas where we can, uh, thanks to technology, uh, provide more, more value to the, to the ecosystem. No? And this is the type of things that we think that we can help uh, people. And this is uh, close to, to what our customers are, are asking for um, to, to insurers, I think. No? It's just to, to go a little bit beyond our core business, our insurance, and try to help them to stay at home for longer and to have a better quality of life. No? And this is all about. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. In that sense, uh, what do you guys think that that is the key to successfully drive innovation in digital healthcare to make sure that the system is working effectively and meets the patient's needs? It's basically a question for everybody. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, uh, Michiel, if you want to take yeah, this one first, yeah, please. It's, 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 it's very aligned in, in my opinion with what we discussed just before, right? So what, what, what Manuel was saying, what Rafael also explained and, and, and Alberta as well, right? So it's, it's um, and, and Manuel actually used a very good example no, of, of listening to, uh, to the patient, no? because what we also see is growing old, 
no, um, is something that affects the entire family, the, the entire no, uh, ecosystem of, of that specific person growing old, but also his, his, his uh, son or daughter, uh, grandchildren, etc., etc. So if you combine this with, for instance, illnesses, I mean, it gets quite complicated. So that's why, um, you know, growing old and, and deciding where to go for, uh, for telemedicine solutions or caregivers at home, it's something that affects the entire family, right? And, and that's something um, very important, I think, from, 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 from all of the companies here present today to, 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 to have that in, in mind, because we're always talking to different stakeholders. In our case, for instance, the person that is contacting us most of the times is going to be the daughter or the son of that person that's growing old. But the, the 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 help that we're offering is for that end user right so we always have like this this family ecosystem that we need to take into account and we need to listen to all of them no? to see you know what are the um the doubts or what are you know the 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 the, the fears of the daughter and son but also what are the needs of that specific pe person growing old and that's why um what we're doing for instance in our case is is we're um doing a questionnaire with the person that is contacting us and with the client um, to talk about the habits of that end client, to better understand that end client, as, as Manuel was saying, no? and to then see how we can help that end user, um, that person uh, that is at home with the best possible solution. And also, um, you know, and I think with the examples that Rafael explained and, and Alberta as well with, with Welly, what we're doing is basically putting the, 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 the family uh, in the center no, of everything that we're doing, understanding what they need and then offering the solutions. And Manuel, again, had a very good example there with you know, listening to, to the patient instead of you know, imposing what they should do. Um. Exactly, and I think this is when, where innovation and collaboration uh, are very, very relevant no, to this. Um, also, we need uh, something that we are um, uh, seeing in our customers no, in, the, in the population is that also the demands on how to, to, to understand no, how to get old and how and the, the expectations uh, of elderly people uh, for the future have are rapidly changing no i guess that also this has been um, accelerated by the pandemic no that people just uh, had time to think in what they expect no for their retirement and they just uh, expect no that uh, new bullet propositions um, uh, innovative companies startups in the in the ecosystem uh, find out uh, the solutions that the market will uh, will demand uh, probably in the in the future no and i think that technology and innovation uh, is the type of, of models that can uh, in, gather the the demands from from customer as Quideo uh, is doing uh, very good and also uh, iterating and developing uh, solutions fast no because probably we are at the starting point of a big shift on the way to understand retirement uh, by elderly people by themselves no so this is about the the silver uh, economy transformation that we experience, but also thinking in the families, no? because also the families, they expect uh, something different uh, for, for their life, no? uh, taking in account that uh, there are uh, people who is in what we call no, the, the sandwich generation, no? that they need to ca take care not only of their elderly or their parents, but also to take care of the, of the children. Uh, and this is, I think, very, very important to, to, to understand and to listen from, from what customers uh, want. And, and also uh, ideate and, and, and develop a solution fast um, into the market. Uh, I, uh, yeah, uh, well, I think, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, Manuel. Yeah, I, I think it will also be uh, important if the if patients somehow could like keep record of the of the, the parameters that are uh, often like measured using the the devices they get at home, because that way, uh, I mean, uh, if the idea is to work together with the uh, public health, health service, uh, which in Spain, uh, public health service is actually quite good. I've been in, I've been able to see uh, health service in different countries and uh, from the different places I've been, Spain, I think it's actually with with a uh, with uh, its shortcomings in some things, but I think it works very good. And I think if patients could somehow have 
the, also those uh, parameters, measurements, their blood pressure, re pleasure, uh, blood pressure records, and that kind of thing. And they could like easily show them to their to their GPs, or if they go to the uh, to the emergency department, uh, that would like greatly help uh, see both uh, sides as complementary and like helping each other and not, not being like a separate thing. Like one thing is the the service I the health service I, I have at home and a completely different thing is when I go to the hospital. It doesn't have to be that way. It can be it, it can be a, a a team some kind of teamwork. And if the patients have that uh, kind of thing and they can access it easily, they can uh, show it to the to their doctors when they like go to these places to the hospital emergency emergency department, and that helps us a lot make decisions uh, based on how the patient has been for a few weeks or days or months, not only what we see at the emergency department, because oftentimes these patients don't uh, are not the best at explaining what's happening to them. Okay. I, I will say that, Manuel, you, you have a, a great topic, which is about, uh, you know, medical devices, monitoring medical devices at home, uh, sharing information between different uh, public system, private system, which is about collaboration, essentially, in my opinion, collaboration between uh, different type of companies, different backgrounds, different realities is key in order to implement hybrid solution. Also, following what, what you mentioned, uh, Michael or Arvel, I, I don't remember very, very well. Yeah, it's about uh, how, to, how to identify how, or how to help people to express themselves during this process. For example, you, Peter, you mentioned about interviews. You have interviewed with family, you have interviewed with relatives, uh, sister, daughter, whoever. And, you know, in our, in our case for telemedic, for example, we train our doctors to identify the pain. You know, sometimes um, I, I always use this following example. If you try to, to identify the pain, it's, it's very difficult if you are not in front of that person, you know, in front of a doctor. You know, it's very difficult to express yourself. You have this, this pain here or my hand or my finger, whatever. So we normally try to, to or we, we, we help our doctors to, to how we, we train them on how to, to manage conversations, on how to, to drive the conversation to help the patients to express themselves in a proper way. So we are able to understand in a much better way what's happening, what's the potential illness, and also help us to, to have a, a make a better diagnose. So that's a, a key element. And Albert, you mentioned about, you know, quality, different, different background of companies, innovation, all together is, is, is the way to create different solutions. For example, under Welly, we have like different companies here providing solutions for the in a specific niche of population, which we really need to take care of their needs because in the future, as I mentioned before, it's gonna be part of our needs. We, um, we are becoming all, it's, uh, it's impossible to stop that process. Well, so we need also to make sure that today we are creating the solutions for the future. And whatever we do today, if it is done in a proper, a smart way, thinking about the future, how we want to be treated in the future, it's the way we are gonna be able to make sure that we are creating a unique and valuable solution. For, for now and also working in a few years from now on. Okay, thank you so much for the insight, uh, Rafael. I think you did a, a great recap. Um, and building further on this one, we have a question from the audience. I would like to, maybe Rafael, this one might be interesting for you too. Um, it's from Jody Picas. It's, it, the question is as following. For a person-centered care, could social integration and health information be a part of the solution? And what kind, what role does technology play here? How, how do you see that? Okay. Uh, that's that's for me the question. Can, can you repeat? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, if you can repeat the question, please. Of course. Uh, also, Manuel, pay attention because I'm, I'm very curious for your opinion as well. Um, for a person-centered care, could social integration and health information be a part of the solution? Um, well, I didn't get it. Sorry. If you can repeat, say, say again. If because social I'm, integration and health inter information could be part of the solution. 
information could be part of the of the solution you mentioned well uh, i i think we often start too late with many things okay uh, i think we're used to waiting for something to go wrong and then we do things about it instead of preventing things from going wrong in the first place. This happens with uh, mental health and this happens also with, with physical health. I think it's a very uh, occidental approach to medicine, uh, waiting for things to go wrong and then we repair them. But uh, yes, uh, information and social approaches uh, if done at an appropriate time, can not, not only be a part of the solution, can in probably many cases prevent uh, the problem from arising in the first place. So if people like wait uh, for too long, then once the problem arises, it is harder to approach. But uh, as, as it happens in mental health, uh, I don't think you have to have a mental illness to go to the psychologist, for example. But this also have, happens with prevention programs in medicine. You don't have to be ill to start a prevention program. If you start a prevention program before you get ill, you can prevent the illness from happening. Or even if it does happen in the end, uh, I, maybe it will be a lot more manageable than uh, if you had you have not you hadn't done anything until that point. So yes, information and uh, and uh, social uh, and social. Sorry, I, I don't remember exactly what what was the, the first part, uh, but they can be and should be part of the solution. And do you see uh, that that technology can play a role here in that uh, that information providing information for for those kind of situations? I I totally think it could. I mean, uh, maybe. Uh, we are. We have a, a wonderful tool nowadays that is uh, uh, social networks, but we tend to use them very poorly. Uh, instead of using them for, I don't know, watching videos of kittens, uh, we could be using these social networks to learn about our health and to learn about what's happening to my family and how can I help them? How I can. Uh, I, I don't know, I have a, if I have a relative that at some point had a, a dementia of some kind, I could be using uh, social networks to learn from, from people who are experts in the matter, how, what can I do to prevent or to decrease the risk I have from suffering such a disease. But instead of doing this, we like, get bombarded uh, all the time with trash information, but also because we don't have someone we can ask about that information. If I could have someone like close or next or someone I trust that I can say, look, I found this video talking about this topic on X medical problem, and I would like you to watch it and tell me what you think about it. I think that would make a huge difference in how people approach uh, health in general. And I think it's something that we should start using instead of letting uh, the algorithms move us, we should be the ones using those algorithms. Nicely said, nicely said. <laughs> well, also we have seen during the pandemic a lot of elderly patients that they need to communicate with their relatives using technology through digital channels. I think also mm -hmm. that's a good example. Definitely. And also a complement to, to this idea, I think for instance, from, from our protection point of view, no, I think that also we can help to raise awareness no, on the importance of healthcare and the good habits. No? And this is maybe connected with Manuel's idea. No? So how to help uh, the healthcare system uh, also with uh, with our our tools now and our resources to raise this awareness of people of taking care of their health and also having good, good habits no i think also this is this is important no and i think that we all need to collaborate in that in that sense 
Very well. Michiel, do you have something to add as well? Oh, yeah, I totally agree. Um, from our side as well. So what we're doing is um, from our side, no? so we, we have caregivers at, at, at home, um, but, you know, they, they also have specific needs um, because they, they sometimes also have doubts no? in terms of, you know, what is he, what, what should I be doing from a health point of view? So everything that Manel was, was talking about, you know, this integration using the technology no? to, to, to also not only educate families, not only um, the, 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 the person in need of help, but also the caregivers from our point of view is, is some, also something very important. So again, we're, we're going back to what we discussed before. No? So putting the entire family and, and, and family here is obviously the person that is in need of, of help, uh, his, his or her direct relatives, but also the caregiver, which in the end also forms part of that family to make sure that everybody's educated no? in, in terms of these health aspects to, that we should take into account. Thank you, thank you. That was definitely a nice recap of, uh, of everything we just said. It just came back together. Uh, okay, do, do you have any, we're, we're actually approaching the end of this webinar. Do you have any last remarks you want to talk about? Maybe, Rafael, do you have something to add? Well, well, just my, 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 final, my final remark of this webinar. Actually, I will say it was very interesting. Uh, I, I really feel very, very proud that we have been able to combine different point of views, uh, backgrounds, uh, different company culture somehow you know to provide a, a unique solution under and your with Alvera under their umbrella where we are also providing uh, new solutions or approaching uh, a, a reality right now which as I said is going to be part of the it's going to be in the future in the near future it's going to be quite common these uh, caregivers uh, telemedicine solutions you know health is the new wellness so we want to live longer we want to live better and we want to stay at our home mainly, so we don't want to, to stay away uh, if we can stay with our family. And I think that combining all these solutions at the same time is the right way to, to approach uh, this decision. I also would will, will like to, to highlight one, one word we mentioned over, over this, this webinar quite a lot of time, it's about quality, it's about trust, it's about a human-centric approach. I think that's a, a key element and that's something we need to always to keep in mind. Technology, some, some, sometimes it's like a commodity, actually. You know, technology is there. We can use, we can use technolo technology as we want. So it's in our hands to use the technology in the right way. It's in our hands to use, te to use technology in the proper way, I will say. And the proper way, in our opinion, is to keep always patients in the centric of whatever we do. Thank you so much. Very nice. Well, actually, uh, um, if, if anybody else wants to add something, this is your moment because we're really approaching the last minutes of the webinar. But I think uh, for what I, I see I, here, Albert? I maybe would like to, to also comment that uh, I think that uh, as a society, we are going to face a lot of challenges now due to this aging uh, society. And I think that we all need to be aware and contribute no, to find solutions. And I think that innovation and also join forces with uh, different um, different players, I think it's going to be a really success uh, factor no, for, for all, no? from the industry, from the public system, but also uh, as a whole, no, as a society. No? So I think that these, these models will, be a, will play a major role in, in, in finding the right solutions to help people. 100% agree no and, and and what albert said um we're all aging no? so we we will all be in the same situation as the people where we're currently just um, designing solutions for no? so within 20 30 40 years we will be in that same um, exact situation. So what we are doing today is basically, you know, what's also going to help us in the future. So in the end, this is something that um, applies to all of us no? individually. So everybody uh, is going to grow old, unfortunately. Um, so it's it's our job now no? to find uh, solutions and to make sure that growing old um, can also uh, be, be something healthy. Yeah. Great. Well, uh... Great, that's a, that's a nice way to end this webinar, I suppose. Uh, I want to thank you all, uh, Rafael, Michiel, Albert, Emmanuel, for your, for your time, for your expertise, for your insights. I think it has been uh, very valuable uh, today, and I hope everybody uh, enjoyed, it, enjoyed it as much as I did. 
Um, if you missed something, if you want to watch the webinar again, please go to the website of Barcelona Health Hub, where this webinar will be published for many, many more times. So you can watch it again if you want to. And um, for now, I would like to thank you all for participation, for participating in this uh, webinar and uh, of course, uh, uh, for being with us today. Thank you very much, Maya. Thank you. Okay. A pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. Bye -bye. thank you all. Bye. -bye. Thank you all. Bye. <laughs>